Hello, my name is Steve Baskoff and I work in the Digital Scholarship and Communications Office of the Gene and Alexander Hurd Libraries at Vanderbilt University. This is the R lesson called Tidy Data and Basic Data Wrangling. If you've arrived at this video by some means other than our lessons landing page, you may be interested to know that there are other lessons in this series. You can find them at vanderbilt.lt slash codegraph. We're going to start this lesson by talking about some of the different ways that you can record data from an experiment or some other sort of data collection event. And to do this, we're going to talk about an example of an experiment that I used to do with my students called the cockroach electroretinogram experiment. I'm not going to go into a lot of details. If you're curious about how we set the experiment up, you can go to this YouTube video and watch me implant an electrode in a cockroach's eye. But essentially, the point of the experiment was to um, measure the ability of the cockroach's eye to detect varying colors of light of varying intensities. And so uh, we embedded uh, electrodes in the eyes and then we had an apparatus that would flash light of different colors into the cockroach's eyes and then we could measure with an oscilloscope the amount of response that the cockroach eye had to each of the different colors of light. So to talk a little bit about the design of this experiment, it was an experiment where we had two factors. Now, based on how I described it, you may think that there was only one, which was the color of the light. But actually, we didn't use just one cockroach. We had actually 24 different measurements that we made. Um, each measurement represented a particular cockroach in a particular box with a particular LED shining the light in their eyes. Each of those LEDs were not the same. Some were slightly brighter, some were slightly dimmer. And so um, the variation among the different cockroaches in their boxes with their LEDs was another factor that we call block. The thing that we measured, the response of the eye in volts, was our measured value. So this is an experiment that has two factors, color and block, and one measurement value, which was the response. So if I were going to create a table in a lab notebook or what I probably would do nowadays would be to create a table directly in Excel. How would I want to set it up to record data of this sort? Well, the most obvious thing to do would be to say, I'm going to have a column for each of the three different colors of light. And then each of the measurements that I make uh, for a particular cockroach in a particular box with a particular L LED is going to be a row and so I'm putting the blocks in separate rows and then each time I do a trial measuring at a particular color of light I write those numbers down in the corresponding columns for the row representing that particular block. It may occur to some people that uh, this isn't the only way I could set this up. For example, it might make just as much sense to have a column for each one of the cockroaches in their box and then to have the rows representing the color of the light. So fundamentally, there's no difference between these two. I'm putting either blocks in rows and colors in columns or vice versa. Um, this is maybe a little less convenient depending on what kind of computer screen you have, uh, typically we prefer to use this method because then if you have more rows than you can fit on the screen, then you're able to just scroll up and down. But there's not really any fundamental reason why uh, this one organization is any better than the other. From the standpoint of conducting analysis in R, however, neither of these two organizational methods is the best way. And we'll talk about the reason for that in the next segment.